Capricorn, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of September 15th through to the 21st. Let's dive right in. So it looks like in your house of belief, what you guys believe, you guys are getting a really firm sense of details around what it is that you need to do on your daily life to make sure that you guys are living up to your goals and able to manifest very supportive daily lifestyles. So I know with my Capricorn placements, I have fallen into ruts with my Virgo energy. And it was just a matter of me getting really clear about when I had the most energy and when I didn't. The Six of Cups. So there might be an emotional nature. You might be having children around. You might be preparing for a child. And what the Six of Cups energy is saying for the start of this week is, Make sure that your inner child is invited along to decide which tasks you get to first, where you go to eat, where you go for a walk, you know, making sure that you have the adequate materials of a hat, sunscreen, things that you would send your child out with into the world, and making sure that even if you're working a nine to five and you feel super busy, you do something during the day to make yourself connect with nature, connect with flowers, even if it's going to a flower shop if you live in a city. and this week we have a partial lunar eclipse so your ruling planet saturn is in your third house of pisces so it just feels like you're having to balance out your energy so much about your spirituality and your beliefs what it is that you communicate versus what it is that you actually believe and it feels like that's getting a very firm like twisting in the light bulb to make sure that everything is properly wired you are firing off correctly and that you are setting yourself up to bloom when <laughs> not cancer season but once capricorn your season comes around so we have the five of wands mercury's out of shadow and i would even say that there's a lot of creativity to tap into there we go there is the king of wands so you go from the five to the king it's like maybe you start to look at the mundane you look at the very small minute details and then you realize how it plays out over time um one thing of, of about like affirmations is that we can only look back about five years after starting that kind of journey or even a meditation journey and see the course that our life has taken from what we were living there's no real knowing what could have been because it's just a projection from where we were or where we are now the queen of swords your 10th house is having a lot of energy shifting you guys are coming into weighing your heart against a feather that is my claim for your career um, i'm a libra sun and i have a lot of placements in the sign of libra and i feel that goddess maat wants us to actually start working now to ensure that we have the capacity to accelerate our growth our expansion our spirituality with neptune in the high degrees of pisces and for those of us with Libra placements, we are needing to step away from codependency, step into owning our emotions, and then responding to our, our, emotions, our emotions in an evolved way. We have temperance. That is heavily indicative of that energy of balancing things out in an evolved way. I want to do my due diligence and give these cards a double check. Just make sure I didn't miss any practical guidance. So we'll start with the Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords. The practical advice is ensure clarity in your decisions and your behavior. So that is getting clear on these minute details this week and making sure that you are coming in clear for people. Neptune is very oceanic energy and while we might see something from a vantage point when we are in that water of our emotions things feel a lot different so it's about coming into this temperance this evolution of being able to maintain that perspective in the moment and shift accordingly aligning our beliefs with our actions and how we communicate them if necessary use a use a magnifying glass or a pair of binoculars to look at your concerns from all possible angles Refine love, longing, and passion. So this would indicate your seventh house cancer. With Mars there, you might have a very passionate nature at this time, Capricorn. You all might be finally starting to use those emotions of yours. With Mars going from six to nine degrees cancer over the course of this week, you all might come to find 
what it means to really have your heart open and what it really means to go for who and what you want. There is a distinction between chasing and being very present and available. With my husband, I just asked him every single question I could possibly ask anyone who I wanted to get married to and the energy was returned. And that's how you know you're ready for a relationship that is a long-term investment. This eighth house energy of Leo that you guys represent is just knowing how much are you willing to risk face to be heart to heart? How much do you actually want to know the person or are you willing to entertain maybe, you know, hopes, wishes, fantasies that have nothing to do with reality? It's important that whenever you are feeling someone, you feel comfortable enough to address the, the middle chakras. Because as we go through relationships and partnerships, Capricorn, we have to meet at all the chakras many times. As the moon cycles roll through, as we tra transform um, the seasons with the, the months and the astrology also indicated, that is whenever we have ruptures, whenever someone maybe isn't keeping up on those mundane tasks that tend to play out over time. Okay, let me read the King of Wands. Oh. <clears throat> so first, the Five of Wands, because that's first from where I am. Create space in your daily routine. And maybe there's a belief that has been blocking you from creating space. And maybe you've been doing a lot of work. You've been getting your, your binoculars on, looking at things from a different perspective, allowing for your emotions to actually have a say, rather than silencing them and repressing them with a goal, a very linear objective in mind. This might include taking time out of your day or establishing your own room, your own space to get creative in. Excuse me, new alternatives are waiting to be explored and tested in your personal relationships and in your career. Go for it. If honestly, if relationships can't withstand Pluto transiting your sign, they were built on false premises. They were built on a vibration of you not believing that you guys could live a life that you love and that you can have a balance between what you communicate spiritually and emotionally, how you convey yourself in relationships and for people to stay by you. And that's okay. Some people come into our life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. So for those people who pull you closer, who give you more freedom, who allow for you to be more of who you are, I would say get closer to those people at this time, Capricorn. The rest, they let the chips fall where they may. Give people time and space because if we look at our relationships from a cyclical evolutionary standpoint, we don't have to cut people off. People will come back when they're ready to and when they're ready to communicate. Third house in Pisces is very much that energy. So King of Wands, practical advice. Recognize your tasks and needs as what they really are, opportunities. Be willing to walk through fire to fulfill your heart's desires skillfully and without fear. Let that be your message this week. Fulfill your heart's desires skillfully and without fear by taking time and space creating a boundary, which is what Pluto wants you to do, Capricorn, to ensure that you were able to be more of you in your life and in your relationships. An emotionally balanced Capricorn is very, very alluring. People will want to get to know you because you are emotionally available to yourself so you can hold such a steady, supportive, emotional foundation for others. All right, the Six of Cups. Dig up your memories until you can bury old feuds. Talk to your inner child. Take your inner child out for lunch. Send them text messages the whole time. <laughs> Leave your childish behavior behind and do what you as a grown-up have wanted to do for a long time. And I send my own phone number text messages all the time. You can, you can also just take your time and write in a notebook. Um, have some sort of self-honoring moment for the partial lunar eclipse this week, Capricorn. I would like to get a few cards from the angels. We won't go that much more with it. Just as I know that Neptune on moon day, the moon will be at zero degrees Pisces and Neptune will be at 28 degrees Pisces. So it feels like 
we're, we're putting the final touches on some things from Pisces season. This is just coming up so much for me is this energy of Neptune for you all. Um, especially because Mercury will be out of shadow on the day that I'm recording this, but it will have gone direct from being out in, in shadow on Wednesday, the 11th Mercury day. So angels, what do Capricorn need to know for this week? Ten of Earth, oh, very happy family life, financial security, finding magic in the little things in life. So it feels like you guys can really cherish, maybe that's your song for the week, is Cherish the Day by Sade. Some like to call her Sadie. I like to call her, play me music whenever you'd like, Sade. Um, I'm hoping that she comes out with more music. I believe she's a Capricorn. She might well be. Now we need to look this up. And I sense that these things can be yours very soon. With Mars transiting your seventh house, it just feels like it's the energy to bring in a mate for my female Capricorns. And then for my masculine Capricorns, you could be that much more balanced if you're looking for a female partner. Oh, yes, she is the Capricorn. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and her son is, of course, in the 10th house. Wow. She's the 25 degree Capricorn, so this is a great week to listen to Sade. Called it. All right, let's get a goddess oracle card. <laughs> Although I did suggest working with Ma'at, the goddess of the scale, making sure that you can see everything through the eyes of love, but still have boundaries, still be able to communicate from this, this space of timelessness while abiding by time. Saturn is the timekeeper. And it feels like with Saturn and Pisces retrograde, going from, I believe, 16 to 15 degrees this week, there's just one ounce of love that needs to be put in from what we receive to our intuition, our intuitive gifts, skills, and abilities. And those things will actually allow for us to amplify our voice, amplify our self, our real self in communications. For any time that you felt like you had to wear a mask to be accepted or people put you into a situation, a circumstance where you had to choose and pick sides, choose yourself. We have Paravati devotion. That's beautiful energy for you all. She's coming with the energy of 42, apparently the secrets to the universe. All right, 42. The empowerment message. True commitment comes from wholehearted living in the body, mind, and spirit, so presence. When Hindu goddess Paravati rises up to greet you, she is acknowledging you for your sincere devotion to personal growth. With the world in so much turmoil, it's not easy to devote yourself to higher knowledge and a strong faith. But if you are to serve others by being a bearer of love, compassion, and light, you must recommit yourself every day. As unwavering in your devotion as Paravati was to Shiva and her goal of bringing peace to the world. Paravati asks you find silence in daily meditation to contemplate your devotion as well as your commitment to all of life and to making this world a better place. And by the way, young Pueblo has some amazing insights on what he views um, meditation to be. He's done, I believe, several of those 10-day Vipassana retreats, but I love his take on it. I just love it. He speaks to um, not running away from yourself because self-love is often a band-aid, you know, like, oh, I'll take myself on a trip and buy myself designer stuff, and it's just a band-aid for what's really underneath and what really needs to be loved and welded and secured and tightly fastened and smothered almost in love and you give yourself space as love too, Capricorn but the 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 need to fulfill outer world things I think Pluto is also going to make sure that that is put into right perspective the great goddess is present when you renew your devotion and make that relationship primary above all else then in all areas of your life your every choice will be in alignment and in service to this truth. When the goddess Paravati comes to visit, it is a beautiful sign that you are on the right track. All right, Capricorn, thank you so much for being here. For those of my Capricorns just joining me for the first time, go on ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell, 
like this video so that you're notified and that people like you can find my videos. It means the world to me, to my subscribers that you're here. Check out my 10 day miracle manifestation course. It's very cyclical. It is not linear, but in doing so we are able to scoop up that much more magic and be that much more in awe of what comes through for us to manifest until next time, Capricorn. Aloha.